Hi, I'm Todd Jones, host of the Press Box Access Podcast, where we interview many of the great sports writers of the past 50 years. In this clip, Dave Kindred talks about covering both Jack Nicholas and Tiger Woods in their prime. And then Dave gives his take on one of the great sports debates. Who was better, Tiger or Jack? Okay, so Nicholas set the standard on the golf course for Tiger to chase. What set Jack apart from his peers at the time? Well, Jack was a, a phenomenon in his own right at the time, you know, from the time he was a kid. What he won the Ohio State, won the Ohio State Amateur when he was 13, maybe. So he was a phenomenon from the beginning. He hit it farther than everybody. You know, he was a great competitor. You know, what, like he never missed a putt that he needed to make. You know, and, and he became, he was one of the first, um, I, well, I'm not sure how to say this. So Palmer, Arnold Palmer invented golf on TV. You know, Nicholas came along and, and profited from that exposure, you know, and then their kind of rivalry that didn't, was not a rivalry that lasted very long because Jack, you know, just ran over him through the seventies. But it, it, he was just, uh, uh, seems to be the great, you know, his, his model, his role model was Bobby Jones. You know, Bobby Jones is, is golf's saint, Saint Mm -hmm. Bobby Jones, you know, and Nicholas wanted to be that guy. So his behavior was modeled after Jones and represented all the best in golf. So whenever you saw Nicholas, you were seeing what you thought of as not only the best player, but the best, of what golf meant as a sport. What is it about Woods that has made Tiger so special? Well, he was one of those, you know, great athletes, great, unique athletes. He had, you know, unbelievable hand-eye coordination or you can't play golf. That's why he can play golf now, you know, on one leg because he still has the great hands. I mean, in fact, he was quoted, I think, after the car accident as saying, um, as long as I've got my hands, I can play. And he can. You know, mm-hmm. it, the first time I saw him was 1996 at, at Augusta. He was an amateur. He played, maybe it was his first pro tournament. Anyway, 1996, he won the Masters for the first time in 97. But in 96, I followed him around and quoted several people, among them Jack Nicholas. Nicholas's great quote then was, this kid is going to win more green jackets than Arnold and I together. That hadn't won one at that time, but it was obviously a phenom that no one could understand. I mean, he was, he played that year, he played the 15th hole, which at that time measured 520 yards. He played it with a driver and a wedge. You know, In and 1996, people, wow. 1996. So he was always extraordinary. He was just, you know, from the start, he was always the best at everything. He was the best driver, the best iron player, the best wedge player, the best putter. He was the best everything. You know, in 97, he won the the Masters by 15 shots, 12 shots, I think, won the Masters. First major. He won the U.S. Open in 2000 by 15 shots at Pebble Beach. You know, he did things that nobody else ever could do. I mean, I quoted Marco Miro once. Marco Miro was a a journeyman pro at the time, but they had become buddies because they lived near each other in Florida. I asked O'Meara, this is before, again, before Tiger had won anything. I asked O'Meara, how good is this kid? O'Meara said, he hits shots no one has ever hit before. Hmm. I said, I said, Mark, you're talking, you've played with Palmer. You've played with Nicholas. You played with all the good ones. What are you, are you serious? He said, dead serious. So the kid does stuff you can't imagine doing. Hmm. Uh, so he was always good. I never liked him as a person. You know, he never liked us. He never liked the media. You know, we were, uh, we were out to do him harm or something. He didn't like us. Yeah, I always felt like when I was around when I was around Tiger at some tournaments, I always felt like he was not one of those athletes that was going to let you in. You were going to have to view from outside. 
And I never, did you ever feel like you were able to get close to him as a writer? No, not at all. Never. Not once. Not once. I went to a photo shoot once with that Golf Digest. You know, the Golf Digest at the time was doing like a tiger instruction piece every month. So that's 12, 12 instruction pieces. They would shoot them all in one day where they'd just give him change of clothes or he'd bring change of clothes. And so I spent a day with him and never got any kind of feel that he was a human being. Mm. You know, he was, uh, he was a machine. You know, they wanted him, they wanted him to take off his shirt, you know, because obviously he had a, a great body. They wanted to show how much, to, to show the body. Mm-hmm. And he he refused to do it. Not only refused to do it, but refused to do it in a nasty way. Um, so, I, uh, and it, but he never cared for us because you know, it was kind of the vanguard of professional athletes today. You know, we and I'm talking about journalists as newspaper people didn't matter. You know, we no longer mattered to any of them. You know, Palmer, Nicholas, those people had grown up in a different time when newspapers seemed to be important. When newspapers no longer mattered, none of the athletes needed us. Very few of them were were kind to us. Very few of them even thought that we were doing work that was that was necessary. Yeah, we can only wonder what what would have been for Tiger if um, you know all the problems didn't rise up and and, the, and well, the, maybe you know, yeah, we get into a psychological puzzle there. You know, did the life he led ruin him or did the life he led make him who he was to begin with? Would he have won the first 10 if he had been a different person or did living that life make it possible for him to win the first 10? You know, the life of, you know, almost um, uh, uh, totally obsessed with whatever he was obsessed with. Right. That's the interesting thing about genius, right? It, you know, that scorched earth mentality, you know, that's. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, his, you know, I think, I think what Tiger is doing with his son, Charlie now is, uh, is kind of the mirror image of what his father Earl had done with Tiger. I think Tiger is trying to be a good father. Earl right. was just trying to create a genius. So you're seeing more of a like a softer Tiger Woods now when you see him with his son, for example. I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. You know, when he won in 2019 at, at Augusta, he was a, a, a different guy than when he had gone away. You know, and I think certainly now, you know, you get to be older, you get to be wiser. You hope. You know, he's 46. You know, he's not going to be the same person at 46 you were at 26. You know, so I think he's you know there's intimations of mortality. Certainly, he has had enough of those by now. That right. that uh, he no longer is the you know step on your throat guy that he right. had been. Remember that photo shoot I was talking about. One of us had said to him that uh, quoted Ernie Els as saying that uh, well the way Tiger's playing, you know, I don't know if anybody can beat him. And Tiger just starts smiling and says he shouldn't have said that hmm. because it was like. He's, he's, he's showing his weakness. Els was showing his weakness by admitting that no one could beat Tiger. And that's what Tiger was. I don't know if he's still that, doesn't, still doesn't have that killer instinct, I doubt, because he doesn't have the ability to just to, to put his foot on people's neck now. Right. So everything changes. And he's, you, know, you hope that it changes for the best. And right. you know, a lot of people go out a lot of people go out whining and whimpering and crying and you hope they go out in a gentler way. And I think Tiger is doing that. Okay. You saw Nicholas and you saw Woods, both of them in their prime. You've got one round of golf. They're playing each other. Who are you taking? Well, you have, you have to take Tiger. I mean, with Tiger at his best was just beyond reach. Tiger at his best. I think Jack would say that. You know, Jack certainly played at a at a higher level, longer. You know, Jack was Jack didn't have the personal problems, let's call them, that Tiger had 
that Tiger finally fell victim to, and who knows how long that had been going on before. But uh, Tiger in 2000, the 2000 and the Tiger Slam where he won the four in a row, you know, mm-hmm. starting with the U.S. Open and ending with the next year's Masters, uh, you can't be better than what Tiger was then. I mean, he won at Pebble Beach, one of the hardest golf courses in the world, playing the U.S. Open, one of the hardest tournaments in the world, and he won by 15 shots. I know, it's <laughs> by great. 15 shots. Uh, I was there, and the, the, the 14th hole was a par five dog leg right. Tiger had about a 230-yard second shot. And after the, after the round, he hit it into a trap at the left front edge of the green, got it up and down for a birdie. After the round, we asked him, what were you thinking on that 230-yard second shot to 14? He says, well, if I hit it, I forget what he hit. He says, but if I hit the three wood, it's going to go, it's going to go into that trap and roll up and out of the trap. If I hit the five wood, it's going to go into that trap. And it's going to roll up and it'll come back and stop where I want it. <laughs> and I'm thinking, wait a minute. He's talking about, he's worried about the last three feet of a 230 yard shot. And he thinks he can control that. Well, that's what he did. So he did things like that all the time. And, and as good as Jack was, Jack was the best of his time. And I think even Jack would say, you know, at our best, you know, Tiger is the better player. Right. 